Siege, your free game this month, will take you to the fantastic world of Gertex, a turbulent world of medieval swords and sorcery. The Children of Light have been left with only three castles to defend them from the encroaching powers of darkness, and every major conflict in that epic war can be explored with Siege. This tutorial will get you started in the game, and in no time you'll be fielding wizards and minotaurs and orcs in mighty conflict. You'll begin your first game in the Tudor scenario, in which you'll play the forces of good trying to retake a stolen castle. Orcs have overwhelmed the small garrison at Fork Nair while your own troops were warring in the forest. You've returned, equipped with bridges and ladders and a single catapult ready to retake the castle from them before reinforcements arrive. From the opening screen, select Begin Playing Scenario and choose the scenario entitled Tudor. You'll be playing as the attacker and it's probably best if you pick the easiest level of difficulty. The scenario begins in pause mode so you can take your time to get familiar with the castle layout. Hold the right mouse button down to scroll around the area and you can zoom in and out for wider or tighter views. Once you've found your way around, click on the Barracks button. This takes you to the Barracks Management screen. You can double-click on any unit for a full description. Field 10 warriors and a sergeant by clicking on them and then clicking on the plus arrow. You can change the multiple button to field different amounts with each click. Once you've selected the troops, click the Deploy button. Your deployed troops should appear next to your camp like this. Now it's time to give them orders. Click on the Defend button and then use the mouse to outline a rectangle defined by these four torches on the moat. By doing this, You've ordered the troops to defend that patch of ground and water so your engineers can bridge it. To get your engineers out there, repeat the process. Go into the barracks and assign 10 engineers, then assign 10 bridge pieces, then deploy them. Again, they should appear back in the camp. Since the game is still paused, the soldiers are still there too. Click on the engineer button and assign them to the same action area as the soldiers. Click on the hourglass button and time will start flowing normally over the battlefield. You can adjust the speed in the options menu. Pause anytime you like to see how things are going you'll notice that the castle starts fielding orcs as soon as you attack it, so it's time to shed some orc blood. Deploy some more engineers, this time with ladders. Now that the moat has been bridged, you can start to work on the castle walls. Again, your action area is marked by torches. Deploy soldiers immediately after to fight on those walls, since the orcs will destroy the ladders if they aren't defended. Now it's time to deploy your archers. They're just like ordinary soldiers, except that you have to define two rectangles for them. First, the target, then where they will attack from. Try making them attack from the defended bridge area. It'll probably be safer. To really rattle the walls of Fort Nair, bring out the catapult. To do this, select at least five engineers in the catapult from the barracks menu. After it's deployed, a catapult is just another missile unit, albeit one with a good range and real destructive power. For your action area, choose the barracks just on the other side of the wall. Place the catapult itself near the fire in the battlefield between your camp and the castle. From here on in, you're on your own. Don't forget to pause and save as often as necessary. The tutor scenario will allow you to get your feet wet before diving into the real war. Take advantage of it, and try playing it from both sides. And from there, you're limited only by the law of the sword.